Welcome back, and I am joined now by one of the world's great novelists, Nuruddin Farah. Nice to talk to you again. It was a few years ago that we last met. It was indeed. And, 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 and you are still in these novels um, exploring a part of the, your part of the world, but from different ways. Yes, yes. I often like to give the opportunity to different characters to have their say democratically. Mm -hmm. And one way of doing it is to change not only the, the thrust of the story, mm -hmm. but also the characters who people the novels yeah. that, I, that I write. I find I learn a lot about, not only about myself, but also about the country. I make certain things clear for myself as I write about them. Yeah. The country, of course, is Somalia. And it's a place that, um, for most of us, we hear about in the news uh, for all the terrible things happening, right? Yeah. We hear about war. We hear about terror. You're writing about what's happening there. You're also writing about the diaspora, people who left, like yourself. What, what, what is it that um, the world misses from, from just knowing the headlines? Well, the world misses a narrative uh, that is unfolding. Quite often, you know, with backgrounds that are not obviously understood or heard about, because mm -hmm. there's a lot of, you know, interesting lives being led by people. Uh, when you consider that about a third of the population of Somalia are internally displaced, mm -hmm. more than a third have left the country. And the whole place is in an upheaval. Mm -hmm. Now, it's that upheaval which occasionally, not all of the time, which occasionally produces bright moments. Because mm -hmm. you know some of the Somalis who've come to this beautiful country have also started to, to do well. Right. And the majority of the people in the current government, the federal government, yeah. Uh, or even some of the gov some of the uh, you know presidents of the uh, mini states that are being created mm -hmm. are run by people who are American citizens, right. and therefore the world is now more connected yeah. to Somalia yeah. than it has ever been. They've gone uh, back. To they've gone back yeah. to 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 yeah. do their duty onto their country. Yeah. Uh, and some of them are doing very well, you know, a very good job. Mm -hmm. But my interest, my interest as a, as, a, as a writer is to follow the story of those who have made it out and then gone back. Yeah. Or those who, for some reason or another, but usually for terrorist reasons, who are murdered and then the consequences of that murder. Right. Because we usually forget when you hear in the news so and so has, you know, died in a in an explosion, yeah. suicide bombing. Right. You tend to forget that they are actually people like you and me. Yeah. With that families. They have with a family, yeah. with yeah. children. Yeah. Yeah. And in this novel, Hiding in Plain Sight, my interest was actually to introduce the character R yeah. just before dying. Right. So it begins in violence. Yes. And then it's all about the reverberations beyond. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, what do, you know, different people also mourn in a different way. The mourning right. is, right. Also, is right. also very different. Right. And then there are those who think that they might exploit a vacuum, like right. a former wife who yeah. wishes to reclaim yeah. you know, the children and who may you know, initiate uh, the legal process. And, and there are those who think they might have in some ways escaped that past, right? I mean, who have left and gone on to create successful lives elsewhere. And, and like Bella. Like Bella in Bella. your book, yes. uh, who's yeah. had created a successful life. So that raises the, uh, the constant issue of identity, yeah. of is one now a sure. citizen of the world or sure. a citizen of the United States? Sure. To what extent is one still of Somalia? Well, it depends on commitment. Yeah. 
political, cultural, and other commitments. And also, it also unfortunately, unfortunately, the those Somalis who've stayed behind and who now fill the vacuum mm -hmm. with their presence. Mm -hmm. Sometimes such persons who don't have a memory of the 60s and 70s Somalia, mm -hmm. when Somalia, Mogadishu was a cosmopolitan city, Somalia was peaceful. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, as you're saying this, I remember I was talking about this uh, some years ago. I mean, people just don't even remember, right? Exactly. This was a beautiful yeah. cosmopolitan place with a lot of culture, yeah. cultural yeah. life that yeah. you grew up in. Yes, yes. Yeah. But you see, the thing also is Somalis, because of the Civil War, have now become narrow-minded. Mm -hmm. uh, their acceptance of those who are different from themselves horrifies them. It's an uh, anathema, for example, mm -hmm. for some of the Somalis who live in Mogadishu now to accept that a person who is half Italian, half Somali, who speaks Somali, mm -hmm. and who is committed to the idea of Somaliness yeah. is also just as Somali as they are. But this Bella doesn't belong to the idea of the clan. Yeah. And the reason is because the, the country has uh, the country begun to suffer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. How, how do you see yourself now? I see myself exactly as I have always seen myself. We should say you live in Cape Town. I live South in Africa. Cape Town, South Africa. You teach part-time here. Yes. And I, I, you know, travel the world. Yeah. But I am a Somali. Mm -hmm. I was born a Somali. Mm -hmm. I have remained a Somali and continue remaining a Somali. And yet, I am from the 60s generation. I am a secular person. Right. I am anti anything authoritarian, whether it takes the guise, whether it's in the guise of Islamic tendencies or you know authoritarian dictatorships mm -hmm. like Siad Barre yeah. and so on and so forth. And therefore, I'm still walking the path that I took many, many years ago when I was sentenced to prison, imprisonment, when I was sentenced to death, when I was threatened, my life was threatened. Now my life is threatened for a different purpose. And the reason is because I say I am a secularist. Yeah. And you know that uh, I, I was born a Muslim. Mm -hmm. I am a Muslim, but I am a secularist yeah. Muslim. Suddenly that's dangerous in a new mm -hmm. way. It, right? becomes, yeah. it becomes dangerous because these uh, mad men yeah. want us to fear. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to ask you finally about the um, situation, it's a big question, but the situation of, of writing in Africa. It's on my mind because I was just in Kenya at the uh, uh, festival in Nairobi, the Story Moja. Oh, yes. So I'm sure you're familiar yeah. with that. Yes, yes. And so it was interesting to see a, lo a, a younger generation of writers from all over Africa, including Somalia, um, who are, you know, more globally uh, 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 attuned, right? I mean, through sure. the internet, sure. uh, sharing culture, sure. seeing themselves as citizens of the world, but still very much writing Africa. Yes. A new Africa. Yeah. Do you see that? I see something quite positive in this. Yeah. First of all, they bring new voices, yeah. voices that haven't been heard before. They connect us to the rest of the world. They are part of a generation you know, I belong to the generation in which I still, and I still belong to that generation in which I write everything in longhand yeah. first, mm -hmm. and then go to the to the uh, computer. Now these are people who compose their writing in, and who are twittering all the time. Right. Now their voices are just as valid mm -hmm. and valuable as the voices of my generation. Mm -hmm. That have uh, that are more likely to quote proverbs and African folk tales, yeah. and these young people may actually not be able even to quote proverbs and folk tales because they grew up in a different uh, yeah. uh, era. Yeah. Now, the other important thing is Africa is multi-ethnic, multi. -ethnic, multi 
cultural. Yeah, of course. And the culture that they bring with them of the 21st century is where we're going. And therefore, I say to them, move on, go on, <laughs> enrich us. Yeah. And this enrichment, the unfortunate business, of course, is that whereas we've had the best world in terms of Africa, yeah. in, in the sense that, you know, my parents didn't have to pay for schooling uh, from elementary through university. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, things are very different. Africa has become commercialized, education has become commercialized, right, right. and the, the link between the rural area and the city yeah. have also been severed. Right. And therefore, yeah. Africa is becoming, uh, well, in inverted commas, globalized. Yes, I don't like right. the term. For, 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 for better and worse. Huh? Sure, <laughs> yes. All right, the new novel is Hiding in Plain Sight, Nuruddin Farah. Thank you so much for talking to us. My pleasure.